This audiobook is for educational purposes and is for personal use only. Master Key System by Charles Hainel. Part 6 Introduction It is my privilege to enclose Part 6. This part will give you an excellent understanding of the most wonderful piece of mechanism which has ever been created. A mechanism whereby you may create for yourself health, strength, success, prosperity or any other condition which you desire. Necessities are demands, and demands create action, and actions bring about results. The process of evolution is constantly building our tomorrows out of our todays. Individual development, like universal development, must be gradual with an ever increasing capacity and volume. The knowledge that if we infringe upon the rights of others, we become moral thorns and find ourselves entangled at every turn of the road, should be an indication that success is contingent upon the highest moral ideal, which is, the greatest good to the greatest number. Aspiration, desire and harmonious relations constantly and persistently maintained will accomplish results. The greatest hindrance is erroneous and fixed ideas. To be in tune with eternal truth we must possess poise and harmony within. In order to receive intelligence the receiver must be in tune with the transmitter. Thought is a product of mind and mind is creative, but this does not mean that the universal will change its modus operandi to suit us or our ideas, but it does mean that we can come into harmonious relationship with the universal, and when we have accomplished this we may ask anything to which we are entitled, and the way will be made plain. Part 6 1 the universal mind is so wonderful that it is difficult to understand its utilitarian powers and possibilities and its unlimited producing effects. 2. We have found that this mind is not only all intelligence but all substance. How, then, is it to be differentiated in form? How are we to secure the effect which we desire? 3. Ask any electrician what the effect of electricity will be and he will reply that. Electricity is a form of motion and its effect will depend upon the mechanism to which it is attached. Upon this mechanism will depend whether we shall have heat, light, power, music or any of the other marvelous demonstration of power to which this vital energy has been harnessed. 4. What effect can be produced by thought? The reply is that thought is mind in motion, just as wind is air in motion and its effect will depend entirely on the mechanism to which it is attached. 5. Here, then, is the secret of all mental power, it depends entirely on the mechanism which we attach. 6. What is this mechanism? You know something of the mechanism which has been invented by Edison, Bell, Marconi and other electrical wizards? by which place and space and time have become only figures of speech, but did you ever stop to think that the mechanism which has been given you for transforming the universal, omnipresent potential power was invented by a greater inventor than Edison? 7. We are accustomed to examining the mechanism of the implements which we use for tilling the soil, and we try to get an understanding of the mechanism of the automobile which we drive, but most of us are content to remain in absolute ignorance of the greatest piece of mechanism which has ever come into existence, the brain of man. 8. Let us examine the wonders of this mechanism, perhaps we shall thereby get a better understanding of the various effects of which it is the cause. 9. In the first place, there is the great mental world in which we live and move and have our being, this world is omnipotent, omniscient and omnipresent it will respond to our desire in direct ratio to our purpose and faith, the purpose must be in accordance with the law of our being, that is, it must be creative or constructive, our faith must be strong enough to generate a current of sufficient strength to bring our purpose into manifestation, as thy faith is, so be it unto thee, bears the stamp of scientific test. 10. The effects which are produced in the world without are the result of the action and reaction of the individual upon the universal, that is the process which we call thinking, the brain is the organ through which this process is accomplished, think of the wonder of it all. Do you love music, flowers, literature, or are you inspired by the thought of ancient or modern genius? Remember, 
Every beauty to which you respond must have its corresponding outline in your brain before you can appreciate it. 11. There is not a single virtue or principle in the storehouse of nature which the brain cannot express. The brain is an embryonic world, ready to develop at any time as necessity may arise. If you can comprehend that this is a scientific truth and one of the wonderful laws of nature, it will be easier for you to get an understanding of the mechanism by which these extraordinary results are being accomplished. 12. The nervous system has been compared to an electric circuit with its battery of cells in which force is originated, and its white matter to insulated wires by which the current is conveyed, it is through these channels that every impulse or desire is carried through the mechanism. 13. The spinal cord is the great motor and sensory pathway by which messages are conveyed to and from the brain, then, there is the blood supply plunging through the veins and arteries, renewing our energy and strength, the perfectly arranged structure upon which the entire physical body rests, and, finally, the delicate and beautiful skin, clothing the entire mechanism is a mantle of beauty. 14. This then is the, temple of the living God and the individual eye is given control and upon his understanding of the mechanism which is within his control will the result depend. 15. Every thought sets the brain cells in action, at first the substance upon which the thought is directed fails to respond, but if the thought is sufficiently refined and concentrated, the substance finally yields and expresses perfectly. 16. This influence of the mind can be exerted upon any part of the body causing the elimination of any undesirable effect. 17. A perfect conception and understanding of the laws governing in the mental world cannot fail to be of inestimable value in the transaction of business, as it develops the power of discernment and gives a clearer understanding and appreciation of facts. 18. The man who looks within instead of without cannot fail to make use of the mighty forces which will eventually determine his course in life and so bring him into vibration with all that is best, strongest and most desirable. 19. Attention or concentration is probably, the most important essential in the development of mind culture. The possibilities of attention when properly directed are so startling that they would hardly appear credible to the uninitiated. The cultivation of attention is the distinguishing characteristic of every successful man or woman, and is the very highest personal accomplishment which can be acquired. 20. The power of attention can be more readily understood by comparing it with a magnifying glass in which the rays of sunlight are focused. They possess no particular strength as long as the glass is moved about and the rays directed from one place to another, but let the glass be held perfectly still and let the rays be focused on one spot for any length of time, the effect will become immediately apparent. 21. So with the power of thought, let power be dissipated by scattering the thought from one object to another, and no result is apparent but focus this power through attention or concentration on any single purpose for any length of time and nothing becomes impossible. 22. A very simple remedy for a very complex situation, some will say. All right, try it, you who have had no experience in concentrating the thought on a definite purpose or object. Choose any single object and concentrate your attention on it for a definite purpose for even 10 minutes you cannot do it, the mind will wander a dozen times and it will be necessary to bring it back to the original purpose, and each time the effect will have been lost and at the end of the ten minutes nothing will have been gained, because you have not been able to hold your thought steadily to the purpose. 23. It is, however, through attention that you will finally be able to overcome obstacles of any kind that appear in your path onward and upward, and the only way to acquire this wonderful power is by practice, practice makes perfect, in this as in anything else. 24. In order to cultivate the power of attention, bring a photograph with you to the same seat in the same room in the same position as heretofore. Examine it closely at least 10 minutes, note the expression of the eyes, the form of the features, the clothing, the way the hair is arranged, in fact, Note every detail shown on the photograph carefully. 
Now cover it and close your eyes and try to see it mentally. If you can see every detail perfectly and can form a good mental image of the photograph, you are to be congratulated. If not, repeat the process until you can. 25. This step is simply for the purpose of preparing the soil, next week we shall be ready to sow the seed. 26. It is by such exercises as these that you will finally be able to control your mental moods, your attitude, your consciousness. 27. Great financiers are learning to withdraw from the multitude more and more, that they may have more time for planning, thinking and generating the right mental moods. 28. Successful businessmen are constantly demonstrating the fact that it pays to keep in touch with the thought of other successful businessmen. 29. A single idea may be worth millions of dollars, and these ideas can only come to those who are receptive, who are prepared to receive them, who are in successful frame of mind. 30. Men are learning to place themselves in harmony with the universal mind, they are learning the unity of all things. They are learning the basic methods and principles of thinking, and this is changing conditions and multiplying results. 31. They are finding that circumstances and environment follow the trend of mental and spiritual progress, they find that growth follows knowledge, action follows inspiration, opportunity follows perception, always the spiritual first, then the transformation into the infinite and illimitable possibilities of achievement. 32. As the individual is but the channel for the differentiation of the universal, these possibilities are necessarily inexhaustible. 33. Thought is the process by which we may absorb the spirit of power, and hold the result in our inner consciousness until it becomes a part of our ordinary consciousness. The method of accomplishing this result by the persistent practice of a few fundamental principles, as explained in this system is the master key which unlocks the storehouse of universal truth. 34. The two great sources of human suffering at present are bodily disease and mental anxiety. These may be readily traced to the infringement of some natural law. This is, no doubt, owing to the fact that so far knowledge has largely remained partial, but the clouds of darkness which have accumulated through long ages are beginning to roll away and with them many of the miseries that attend imperfect information. That a man can change himself, improve himself, recreate himself, control his environment, and master his own destiny is the conclusion of every mind who is wide awake to the power of right thought in constructive action. Larson. Part 6, Study Questions with Answers 51. What are some of the effects which can be produced by electricity? Heat, light, power, music. 52. Upon what do these various effects depend? Upon the mechanism to which electricity is attached. 53. What is the result of the action and interaction of the individual mind upon the universal? The conditions and experiences with which we meet. 54. How may these conditions be changed? By changing the mechanism by which the universal is differentiated in form. 55. What is this mechanism? The brain. 56. How may it be changed? By the process we call thinking. Thoughts produce brain cells, and these cells respond to the corresponding thought in the universal. 57. Of what value is the power of concentration? It is the very highest personal accomplishment which can be acquired, and the distinguishing characteristic of every successful man or woman. 58. How may it be acquired? By faithfully practicing the exercises in this system. 59. Why is this so important? Because it will enable us to control our thoughts, and since thoughts are causes conditions must be effects. If we can control the cause we can also control the effect. 60. What is changing conditions and multiplying results in the objective world? Men are learning the basic methods of constructive thinking. 